While a golf grip is an extremely crucial part of a successful golf swing, I'm sure you've noticed there are different types of golf grips being taught by different pros, depending on your skill level, your hand size, your strength, and what you want to accomplish with the golf ball. In this golf grip tutorial, I'm going to cover the different golf grip positions, their pros and cons, and give you the options so that you can choose which golf grip would work best for you. Here's a quick review of the reference points on my hands. I have a D on the callus at the base of this pinky for distance. I have an N for neutral, a C on my heel pad for control, a dot at the base of my index finger as a pivot point, a dot at the base of this pinky, a dot on the second knuckle of my index finger, my lifeline's marked, my snuff box is marked at the base of my wrist where it hinges in between two tendons in the pocket, I have the arrows in between my thumb and forefingers marked, just as a reminder that whenever you grip the golf club, your thumb and forefinger always goes together. To ensure that your wrists have the maximum ability to cock and uncock for releasing a golf club throughout the golf swing, your palms should always have the relationship of facing each other. If you were to grab the golf club in front of you like that, that would be the relationship that you have. So no matter where your left hand is placed on the club, your right hand is always placed in a mirroring position so the palms are facing each other. The right hand grip is a finger grip. The club runs across your hands at an angle from the base of your pinky to the second knuckle on your index finger. Your lifeline right here goes on the top right side of your thumb. When you grab the club, you make a question mark with your index finger with your thumb and forefinger together and that supports the club in the backswing. Now I'm going to talk about the three different grip styles. And while I'm here, you can see how the lifeline on my right hand fits snugly against the top right side of my left hand thumb. This grip right here is called a ten finger grip. This is good for people that need more leverage, especially like little kids. The only drawback is to it is if you get your hands loose and let them get farther apart, you don't get good release and good club head speed. Now if you bring your pinky up on your right hand and slide your right hand down against your left hand, rest your pinky between the index finger and the second finger on your left hand. This is called an overlap grip. This is a good grip for people that have longer fingers. The only drawback is if you have smaller fingers, it's easy to get your right hand out of position trying to find a comfortable place. Now if you bring your index finger up on your left hand and your pinky up on your right hand and you lock them together like that, that's called an interlock grip. This grip is good for people that have shorter fingers. The only bad thing is, is it's easy to get the grip too far into the palm of your right hand. There are different angles that you can hold the golf grip in your left hand depending on your physical ability and what you want to do with the golf ball. Now if I put the golf grip across this pivot point of the base of my finger and the D that's on my callus right here and I grip the club like this, most of the pressure is in these fingers right here with a little bit against my heel pad. This is called a distance grip. It maximizes my wrist's ability to cock and uncock during the swing. If I look at my thumb down the shaft, I measure it, it's about three finger widths down the shaft. If I take my thumb and put it up against my index finger, it makes it more easy for my right hand to fit over the top of it. Now if I put the golf grip on that pivot point across to the end and I grab the club, the club is still underneath my heel pad right here. I turn it over and measure my thumb down the shaft and it's one finger width down the shaft. This grip is a compromise between distance and control.
Now if I put the shaft on the pivot point and I run it across that C and I grab this grip like this, it's still firmly in my hands, but it's no longer underneath my heel pad. It's on top of my heel pad. If I look over from the top and measure my thumb down the shaft, there's no finger widths. This is a maximum control grip because it restricts your ability to release the club. Looking at the top side of my left hand, holding the club face square to the target, with the snuff box on the right side of the grip like this, this is considered a strong grip. This arrow right here will point towards your right shoulder. This would be a good grip for anybody that sliced the golf ball. Now if I re-grip and I keep the club face square to the target, and I put the snuff box on top of the grip right here, this is considered a neutral grip, which is preferred by most people. This arrow right here will point towards your right ear. Now if I hold the club face square to the target and I turn my hand to the left side right here, now with the snuff box on the left side of the grip right here, that's considered a weak grip. A weak grip is good for people that hook the golf ball. If you hook the golf ball, you can weaken your grip and turn it to the left side and that will help you out. Now in summary, just remember, whether you use a three-finger distance grip, a one-finger neutral grip, a no-finger control grip, a weak grip, a neutral grip, or a strong grip, where the left hand goes, the right hand follows. One point in the golf grip that needs to be remembered is allowing a half inch of the golf grip to protrude beyond the end of your hand so that you maintain optimum control of the golf club throughout the swing. Once you have your golf grip, your hands should feel snug and unified. If they don't, go ahead and ungrip and regrip. Make a slight adjustment if necessary until your hands feel snug and unified. Also, don't grip the club any tighter than is necessary to maintain complete control of the golf club throughout the entire golf swing while maintaining a steady grip pressure.